together. And it's clear, I think, if you <coughs> examine the context of those two texts, that the books were intended to be complements. Both were intended to center on the whole problem of what perception is, how perception changes, how perception comes about through the process of development. In later years, we have seen tidy explanations or tidy lists of the major elements of an ecological program of uh, perceptual research, beginning with the idea of examining stimulus array variables with the uh, intention of finding uh, patterns that could be seen as informative for properties of features of the world around us. The second way uh, integrated at the time that, uh, that I could that I could bring uh, together of, uh, lots of, of different kinds of situations uh, uh, by pointing out that, that uh, yes, learning was going on, um, uh, but it was uh, not the kind of learning uh, that people had thought of uh, uh, in their broken terms. Uh, it was not uh, a conditioning and stimulus and a response. Uh, it was something that we call perceptual learning. And it didn't work like a, uh, 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 an SR theory, uh, uh, an enrichment theory, as, as Postman was willing to call it. So we thought that we had provided, or I thought I had provided a different kind of theory uh, that was much broader um, uh, and that was a much better vehicle for understanding of um, uh, learning in a lot of kinds of situations. Maybe in development, except that, uh, as I say, I didn't, that wasn't as successful at the time as, uh, as it can be now. Where did affordance theory come in? Much, much later. I had never heard of it then. Nor had my husband. <laughs> now, now it's very important to me. Uh, uh, but he came up with the idea of uh, affordance uh, uh, much later than that when we were talking about uh, differentiation and enrichment at all. Uh, and much later on, um, uh, uh, he was thinking about locomotion. Uh, and uh, we got thinking about about um, uh, the kind of uh, the interaction there must be between um, uh, any animal and, and its environment um, uh, and, and the reciprocal role of, of the two. And he wrote a paper on, on locomotion. It was a new respect at Oxford. I guess I worked on the back thing too. Uh, anyway, I worked on it a long time. He wrote a paper on locomotion, uh, in which he doesn't use the term of voice, but you can see it coming. <laughs> uh, uh, he uh, talked about uh, uh, locomotion and uh, 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 the uh, importance of perceiving a ground that was safe to walk on and so on. Uh, well, that paper, which I always thought was a wonderful paper, was reprinted uh, quite recently in the journal of ecological psychology. They're selling it separately. I hope they make some money with it. <laughs> Rachel just mentioned one. I think that, that we need research on exploratory activity uh, uh, very much. And so, um, uh, and how it becomes flexible, for instance. Flexibility also is something that we need to research on. But I, I decided, uh, uh, this is something that's different about uh, 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 the new book on perceptual development. In, in the old one, um, uh, uh, I've decided that, that we need to pay more attention to what seem to me properties of, of behavior, um, uh, not just perceiving that they have to and that sort of thing, but, but, but uh, properties of, of human nature, I call it, then it could be animal nature too. Um, and, and I uh, included a chapter on that which I would have enlarged on if, if the fan had, had really liked that idea very much. You know. uh, but, but I think that there are uh, 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 very important properties that, that define uh, human behavior that we uh, should pay much more attention to. The ones that I picked out to include in the book are agency uh, and prospectivity, uh, 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 search for order, and flexibility. But it turns out that in recent research uh, uh, on infancy, uh, there's quite a lot of information about development 
of, of some of those from the agency, for instance, prospectivity of law, um, uh, and uh, search for order, too, although there could be a lot more research directed at it. But there's very little about flexibility. And I, I think there should be. It's, it seems to me um, uh, uh, maybe it's possible, a lot of people suggest uh, that, that uh, when uh, infants, very young infants, uh, first uh, uh, learn something uh, uh, about the environment or how to uh, 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 do something in the environment, there's not much they can do at first, of course, uh, uh, what they learn is quite specific uh, to the situation, uh, uh, the activity, whatever it is, uh, the circumstances uh, in general. Um, uh, uh, it doesn't seem to have much um, uh, transferability or flexibility. Now, to what extent that's true, I don't know. Uh, uh, maybe it's only a few cases that have been exaggerated, never like that. But it certainly is true that as time goes on, flexibility increases. Uh, and I don't think we know enough about how it does. In psychology or things like neuroscience, and oh, yeah. uh, some people might have even said psychology is dead, that, 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 that now psychology itself is irrelevant and we should specialize in it. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your comment? To you? my, comment my, my position is just the opposite. Yeah, I, I don't think that the neuroscientists are taking us anywhere. I think that, that we have a field of our own which is just right for investigation, but we know how to do it now, we know how to go about it. There are just dozens of experiments, and there are all, uh, uh, all these various uh, uh, properties of human behavior that I'm concerned with that I think we need to deal with. And I think we've got our own field of, uh, at our own level, and I think that's where we should be working. Which is Um, and so 
so in this case, the baby didn't, didn't even try, right? Didn't even try, it sort of sat there the whole time. <coughs> Sometimes you would see the babies would do a little explore turn. Here's an example of crawling across a small gap. The baby just went straight across. And there you can see examples of crawling across a gap that's too far for the baby to crawl across. Um, perhaps even more dramatic is the example of, I think this is the 90, 90 centimeter gap, which is <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, that was fun. Flying. <laughs> <laughs> 